Yeah, this this podcast is really just marketing for your Instagram, right? Hey, what is going on, you guys? Welcome to One of Each, the Dumb and Hungry podcast, where we talk about our food adventures and our favorite food groups. I'm Angelo, the Dumb and Hungry. And I'm Macho. I'm Macho Salvation. Let's go by Daniel. Okay, well, thank you, everyone, for joining us. I hope you're doing all right. Well, <laughs> I, I was going to say that it's nice to see some familiar faces, but after that, I'm not too sure. Anyway, hope you guys are doing okay. <laughs> nice to see you again. <laughs> um as you can hear and uh to those following along we have uh some familiar uh, faces back john and daniel so welcome back nice to see you thank you thank you for having us right on um we have a lot to Definitely talk about my favorite day of the week every time <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> paying you <laughs> i mean john, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, John, are you, are you not getting paid for this, John? I mean, this is definitely like no outrageous. <laughs> well, you're gonna—I I mean, bet you're gonna strike or picket or something at some point. I was about to say it's time to unionize people. Yeah, let's go. I am so down. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay. Um, <laughs> unions aside, and uh, let's just get right into it. Maisha, how you doing? <laughs> Doing great. I've been doing the Pokemon Sleep thing that just came out last week. Uh, but also, more importantly, uh, today, or I guess follow up from AX, uh, only won a giveaway from Calbi USA. They do a lot of the Asian I, uh, chips, right? Yeah. So she won. She won a giveaway, and we just got the box today. Uh, There's a box. It's glorious. What kind? Is it a big box? It Unboxing. Is... Oh, okay. Let me go grab yeah, the... it. Let me see if it's available. Go ahead. One sec. I was super surprised to find out Colby. Yeah. So yeah, because I always knew him from shrimp chips, but then I found out mm-hmm. they also do what is it? Those snap peas? The harvest yeah. snap peas? Yeah, yes. I noticed it in the picture. Yes, I was like, whoa! I had no idea that's Colby too. So yeah, yeah. props to them taking over the world. You guys seem to be more familiar Diverse with this snack yeah. than I do. What? Maybe, maybe I'm. Maybe I've you, you know it. it. Oh, do yeah, I? Yeah, these shrimp chips, like these. Oh. I came yeah. with that. Oh, nice oh. classic. How cool is that? Let's take a look. Just uh, talk us through the different things that contents in the box. What's in the box? It's basically one of each flavor of snack that they make. Beautiful. Uh, well, first, we'll start with great, that. great with the podcast. One of each, man. Oh, it's perfect. It came in today. You got this uh, p- pizza potato chip thing. Ooh, I don't know. Okay. Okay. Uh, nice. I haven't tried it, but it looks good. I like pizza. You got the classic. You know, shrimp That's, chips, original mm, flavor. Come on, Angela, you gotta recognize that. Yeah, they're they're also fifty years. I did not realize it's that old. Oh, I hope they're not stale. Even if they are, I'd still eat them. I mean, I I'm, just, I'm just there for the powder. I, I think it takes more than fifty years for them to go stale. <laughs> just just my observation of them. Okay. I got some honey butter chips. I got these sea oh the seaweed and salt potato chips. Very cool. Ooh, nice. nice. Are okay. these common that. flavors though? Like, yeah. Okay, so you'll see these like you know if you go to a you know grocery or Asian grocery or whatever that you, hey, yeah you'll see these flavors. Yeah. They're not like you know exclusive Even. to whatever. I don't know. Like if you yes. like if you go to um, like Asia right or some other more exotic store <laughs> elsewhere. <laughs> I'm I'm just asking. I mean, yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I, I live in Little Tokyo now, so I see it all the time. But yeah. I don't know. I don't know. All right. Uh, we got these vegetable sticks, the original flavor. Didn't know they made that. Yeah, got, that's uh, oh, really? These are good. These they have other flavors. Uh, there's one in here for Hokkaido butter. You'll see it later. That's the always go to. Uh, what is this one? Oh, Hokkaido butter flavor. Sorry, this is a uh, yuzu black yuzu. pepper oh, shrimp that's, chip. Ooh. That sounds pretty good. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Haven't tried that one yet, so I'm excited. We got these Himalayan pink salt my pote potato chips. <laughs> my pote. I mean, they really loaded French. it up. That's pretty good. 
Yeah. Oh, we're not even halfway to the box. Oh my god. <laughs> we got sriracha the- mayo shrimp chips. Ooh, nice. That sounds good. Yeah, forget the podcast. Yeah, I know. We should just go through this. Let's just watch my child eat all these snacks. (laughs) I will be so down, but she wouldn't let me because they're her her chips. I know my child's saying like, she's he's like, I can't wait to try these. (laughs) It's like all he's like, think again. (laughs) It's the Hokkaido butter vegetable stick Mm. thing. That one's good. It is. It is a good flavor. Uh, oh, the white truffle, my pote chip. Wow. This one's good. Is this really their high-end brand, the my pote, or is that just a different label? I don't know. It's, yeah, that's all new to me. It's probably just a different label, but at the same yeah. time, it's white truffle, so I don't know. Yeah, that was the black label stuff. Yeah. Here's the garlic herb butter, my pote chip. I mean, they all sound great. I mean, I, I don't know where to start. I have no idea what this is. It's all in Japanese. But it looks like a fry, so it's a fried potato is my guess. Are those like individually packaged? I couldn't quite tell. Yeah, like this okay. one. Oh, no. Inside, no. No. But they okay. gave us like four of these. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. I think the important lesson I'm getting here is that if you're a weeb, you get buckets of potato chips. So that's pretty good. <laughs> Days to be yeah. a weeb. <laughs> If you win the giveaway, she won one. Another friend of ours won it. She got her box yesterday, and I'm so jealous. Oh, that's... And then we got ours today. Same thing? Yeah, exact same box. She showed us pictures. Uh, there's this, this other Calbi potato chip of some kind. Hot and spicy potato flavor. Oh, okay. So, okay. Does anyone else, does that like potato chip mascot look like the, um, like, I, the peanut? I'm, oh, I wasn't thinking the peanut, but that's also good. I was thinking the, like, Mr. Bill from, did you guys watch those video, educational oh, videos? Yeah. Like, the guy riding the, the bill. Yes, just that right. one. Yeah. yeah, way back. Yeah. The cartoon of uh, how the government works, if you remember. Yes, it's actually quite Angela accurate. And I were not, Angela and I were not educated, so. Well, it's I the see. same. Um, you guys, you guys just... flunked out before eighth grade, are right. like uh, <laughs> school. I keep wanting. I, I want to well, say Schoolhouse cool. Rock, but that's not right. Oh. oh. Yeah, it's it's. I think it's the same makers, like with conjunction, junction. Right. What's what the function? function? Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. that's yeah. a classic one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yes. That's the thing. So wh- wasabi flavored shrimp chips. <laughs> I had those. <laughs> so many. Those are, those so those are good. Many. That's the those one are... I can vouch for. Uh, oh, okay. Nice. I'm excited. Hot garlic flavored shrimp chips. Oli says she tried these before. She likes them. That sounds. Wasn't that sounds there like a gar- another garlic version already? Shrimp chip that you shared. There was garlic or onion, right. but garlic. Oh, garlic hot. herb. It wasn't shrimp Got chip. It. But it was a garlic herb potato chip of some kind. Mm-hmm. Got it. Okay. I'm just, I'm just more and more overwhelmed by the variety that you have. Yeah, the snap there you chip. Go. These are good. Everyone loves That's these. That's got to be healthy or something, right? It's green. Yeah, I mean, it's green. Something right? about <laughs> that design looks very different from everything else in that box. <laughs> One of these things is not like <laughs> exactly <laughs> taco yaki. taco yaki bowl. Interesting. Oh, dang. I have interesting that. flavored corn snack. Interesting. I guess those aren't going to... I was saying the takoyaki balls probably won't burn my mouth like real ones do. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I hope not. (laughs) Onion soup flavored my pote chip. Fancy. How how many bags are we talking about here? This is like a full... Granola? Fruit and granola? (laughs) Granola? Granola. (laughs) It's like a total... One of of these things is not like the other. Exactly. They were giving these away at the con. No I, wonder. Uh, I see. I, this was my lunch yeah, one why? day. They're offloading them. Yeah. They're overstocked. <laughs> mm. We made a mistake. We stopped using <laughs> potatoes. <laughs> this is a Jagabi ketchup flavor. Jagabi. Of the, uh, I remember, the vegetable stick. I remember Tomo talking hmm. about those at one point. Uh, probably oh, really? because of the ketchup, but I don't remember. Like, So the Jagabi is like a fry thing, I think. It's like a fry. Yeah, it looks like a fry, yeah. fried chip, fried potato chip. Fresh fry cut potato crisps is what mm. it says in the box. And the last thing, the last unique thing is the uh, this one, uh, Jagabee lightly salted flavor. Okay. Asterisk, 55% less sodium. I like how happy that potato is as he's sliding into that pot of oil. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. He knows, he knows what's good for him. Release me! <laughs> you know, okay, so... That's pretty good. I was trying to just do a quick search like on the brand and get myself like familiar with it. There's like a result on Google, like a question says, are shrimp chips healthy? 
And it just says shrimp chips are calorie dense, meaning they contain a significant amount of calories. <laughs> small yeah. The, so another word is a calorie efficient. You don't need to spend a whole lot <laughs> to get a lot of calories. I believe, I believe the way I think of it is it's like the college age special. <laughs> There's exactly 420 calories in a bag. So, you know, they know what they were doing. Exactly. That's pretty good for a bag of chips. <laughs> What do you mean? That's a lot. It's like, like a serving of Cheetos, which is like seven Cheetos. It's already 200 calories. <laughs> is it really? It's a lot. It's a little more than seven. It's a lot. But it is 200 what, calories. 200 calories in a bag? Jesus. For, for a, a one ounce bag. Yeah, the smaller bag. That's crazy. How many ounces is that, that wasabi? 3.3. 3. I'm already better. Double the, <laughs> double the thing. Hot. Bag. So tell me again how uh, Oli uh, managed to snag herself this giveaway. Oh, at AX, Kyle uh-huh. Biose had a booth, right? And one of their things was, like, they were doing giveaway, basically, right? So you take an Instagram picture, you tag them, uh, and you follow them, and you'll be entered to win. But even just for entering, you can get a tote bag full of, not full, but with some snacks as well. Mm. It was the granola, you, um... it was the Chuck Rico. Can you pull up a random bag or two and check the expiration date? Uh, these aren't American, so they don't have one. No, best before November 2023. That sounds just. I was wrong. trying to help you out. I know. I was trying <laughs> to help you out and say, look, if the expiration date is in a month, you better start working through them right now. <laughs> oh, don't worry. They'll be gone before then. All of it. They'll be they'll be gone before yeah, this next, evening. Next podcast. <laughs> Save all the bags. Yeah. The original podcast. one expires this uh, in August, so you know this one. Got it. That, I'm excited for that. That's one. the priority then. So yeah. Well, you got your content for next week, Angelo. <laughs> <laughs> well, report back and uh, let us know how it how it turns out. They they all sound like great flavors. Um, oh, they're all going to be delicious, I'm sure. The granola is questionable, but I mean, you know. It's <laughs> saving me, all right? It's there, this, you know. When I had no food because I forgot to pack lunch, it was great. Okay. It was clutch. Nice. Is it just straight granola or is there like little shrimp chips in there? <laughs> no, it's granola and like fruit and shit. <laughs> it gets the job done right yeah i can't tell if if shit is just you know like the normal the finisher or it's like nah just the rest of this is shit (laughs) (laughs) that bag's gone it's 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 lost in this giant box of stuff got it okay well yeah try it out so let us know it sounds really good so um and I guess congrats, Oli. All right, because you know. Yeah. It's a six-pound box. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's hefty. It's a six-pound calorie-dense box, really. <laughs> uh, just how I like them. So that's that's <laughs> 20, <laughs> twenty pounds on a human. <laughs> <laughs> Easily. Nice. Well, good. That that's a uh, that's a nice highlight. Something to to enjoy. So. Best part of my week. Yeah, best Bar part. None. Absolutely. What about you, John? What's going on with you? I'm not going to follow that. <laughs> uh, we should just. There's definitely no Calvi situation in our lives. Uh, what did we do? We uh, went to Disneyland over the weekend. It was hot, but surprisingly, the crowds weren't too bad. So it actually, it was pretty pretty nice to be able to navigate that. And then, uh, you know, this past weekend is Barbenheimer fever, where mm-hmm. The two movies have been feeding off one another on social media. And there's just reports of people watching Barbie and then watching Oppenheimer or watching Oppenheimer and watching way around, Barbie. Usually. <clears throat> yeah, I think people want to end on an upper. Start with the downer, yeah. end with the upper. Yeah. I think there was speculation that um, Warner Brothers... So Nolan used to exclusively produce for Warner Brothers. So all of his movies have been with Warner. Dark Knight series, Interstellar... Tenet was the last straw that broke him, though, because they had released that on HBO Max. And, and Nolan's such a huge cinephile. Like, he wants all of his movies to be in theaters. And so he was very upset by that, especially because Warner did not tell any of the directors or talent that they're going to pivot these titles during COVID. Uh, they just threw them up on the streaming service. So he's like, no, I'm not doing this anymore. Um, so he went to Universal. He made Oppenheimer. 
And then Warner has Barbie. And I think there's speculation that Warner released Barbie kind of as a slight to Nolan on the same weekend to try and tank Nolan's box office. Oh, but I think it had the opposite effect where I don't know I don't know if it was a universal camp, if it was a Warner camp, it was just organic through social media, but this Barbenheimer portmanteau emerged and all of a sudden it was just trending everywhere. And anytime a trailer dropped for one of the two movies, you would see an uptick in views of the trailers of the other movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that went into the weekend and they both titles did extraordinarily well. I think Barbie was expected to open around ninety million and it opened at one sixty two, mm. which is yeah. which is domestic. Yeah. Which is um, you know, that's that's peak Marvel territory. And then Oppenheimer, which was expected to open at 40, ended up opening at 82, 88, yeah. somewhere in that range. And this is this is Nolan, I believe it's his first R-rated movie. Everything else was much more accessible to the audience. This one was R-rated. Um, it's a biopic, so it's not flashy and showy in any way, shape, or form. He's super prideful of the fact that he did everything with practical effects. Um, so on paper, it shouldn't have worked. Well, sure, it I mean, shouldn't have worked as well as it did. I'm I'm no expert, but so it's a movie about an atomic bomb. He did everything with practical effects. Does that mean <laughs> like he made an atomic bomb? Is that what I'm getting out of this? You know, the budget was a hundred million, so I'm not sure. That if, might be enough. Well, maybe. It's it modern times. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's modern times. <laughs> you don't need as much uranium these days. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> um, no, he 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 built a special rig to emulate a bomb. So, like, it would blow up smoke and dust in certain directions and blow clouds in other directions and breathe fire. Um, but, yeah, it did really well. So, we watched that Monday night. Uh, it's three hours long, so... Definitely use the restroom beforehand. There is no intermission, um, but it was it was pretty pretty phenomenal. I mean, I've only seen a handful of biopics, so I don't have a lot of of titles to compare against. But it definitely felt inherently different and distinctly Nolan. Um, but yeah, the cast is phenomenal. The sound is incredible. The script, the writing is great. So. It was good. We'll watch Barbie tomorrow, and then uh, we're going to compare the two. There are some theaters, so there's only... So Nolan is a cinephile, so he's he's adamant that people watch it in 70mm IMAX. There's only 30 70mm IMAX theaters in the world. There's only two in SoCal. So one is AMC CityWalk, and the second one is the Chinese Theater in Hollywood. There's also one in Ontario. There's also one at Irvine Spectrum. So that's all SoCal. And then I think NorCal has two, one in SF, one in Sacramento. So six of the 30 70 millimeter IMAX theaters are here in California. Um, 19 of those total are in the States and the rest are scattered throughout the world. And all of those showtimes have been just completely sold out. Incredible. Well, that Normally IMAX doesn't contribute that much to the box office relative to regular theaters. I think during the opening weekend, domestically, 26% of ticket sales were IMAX tickets. Hmm. Well, that's that's why there's like those people watching in the front row, right? And they're just getting the full like... <laughs> <laughs> the very there was front a woman row. who came into the... She came into our IMAX screen. She walked up the front row, dead yeah. center, sat down, craned her neck up, oh my put her head back down, stood up, and walked away. <laughs> <laughs> She gave it a good old college try. It's like, uh, she did. no. She, did. she actually sat down. She actually looked up and she's like, I'm going to need a chiropractor. And That's then she weird. left. Do, do people actually buy those seats? Are those seats actually practical in any way? Do people actually buy them? So the one, the 70 millimeter showings, they have bought those seats. For the digital IMAX, I'm seeing more openings in those first two to three rows. There was a bit that was done by IMAX in Australia, I think it was Sydney, has an IMAX. Australia has one of their Sydney Northern IMAXs, and the guy who was doing the report sat in the front row, and he's like, you know, it does require a little bit of a, of a strain, but, like, he could be comfortable sitting through that. He didn't specify he could be comfortable sitting through that for three hours, right. but he said he's right. comfortable sitting through that, so. 
Yeah, I sat in a non IMAX. It was just like a regular theater, but it was it was like a bigger theater. I sat in the front row when they were doing free like a free movie night because I was like, well, you know, it's like it's the front row, but it's a free movie. Let me do it. And you know, it was a good time. But that was college when like you could kind of stretch your back in weird ways. Now I sit <laughs> now I sit on a plane for an hour and I'm like, oh god. <laughs> Mom, that free movie night better come with PT. <laughs> <laughs> They should they should bundle it together, just like a, a special. <laughs> right, yeah. As a as an add on. Right after you get your ticket, it's concessions, and then right out of concessions it's PT. That's right. <laughs> but it sounded like um a movie worth watching. It... I think it's worth watching in the big screen. Mm. Yeah, it's gonna be difficult to emulate a lot of the 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 sound making and the sound effects at home unless you've got a good sound bar. And a good sub. Yeah. You're gonna need a good sub. I think somebody was telling me in IMAX, the theaters, there's eight levels of volume that you're allowed to set the sound at. And Nolan requested that all for the movie be um, shown at level eight. Like max. Whereas most movies are normally shown around level six or seven. Oh my goodness. Oh well. I mean, I'm half convinced because was I saw Dunkirk, right? Which is also Christopher Nolan, and that was obscenely loud. Like, I mean, it was, it was fun. Like, don't get me wrong, but I'm like, I'm like, this guy must be like borderline deaf, right? Like he has to like, <laughs> like he has to listen to that noise and be like, yep, that's perfect. Like I want to blow people's right. eardrums out. Like I like, like, is that right? Or I don't know. I don't think he, I don't think he, he, he doesn't want to hear the dialogue. He just wants to feel the dialogue. <laughs> Shaking your bones. Some of the, yeah, there are some parts in the movie that is really loud, but I think with the most impressive, the more impressive thing to me was the sub woofers and how hard they were working because there are some scenes where I'm like, mm. I don't know what they're doing on the screen, but I feel like it's about to tear me in half. <laughs> I like when, that in uh, Top Gun. That I felt like some scenes yeah. like that it was pretty dope. Yeah. Yep. I wonder if, um, you know, people who are watching Barbie, you know, at the same time, you know, they go through these scenes. There's, um, yeah, there's videos of, I mean, it's in the trailer. So, you know, the, well, and you also know the history that they built the atom bomb. So when they test the scene where they test the bomb, um, there are people who are, who are uh, live streaming on, or they were recording themselves on TikTok for whatever reason. And you could see them visibly shake oh, really? when the bomb goes off. <laughs> oh my gosh. Because it's so earth, sh- it's, it's such an insane sound. And... <laughs> They're like holding the camera and even the auto stabil- the stabilization technology isn't enough to, to keep them from doing a little bit of a rattle. Ooh. But yeah, it's, it's loud. And I think the other thing that was really fun too is that, you know, the theaters were, were really busy. Uh, it was a Monday night and parking was hard to find. Mm-hmm. People were dressed up as Barbie. People were dressed up as Oppenheimer, which is a little bit more dapper and drab. <laughs> yeah, that's a little niche. Yeah. Maybe, maybe they were just lonely. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, but but you definitely saw both crowds out there, and never seen such a long line for concessions in my life. Wow! Mm. Gotta say, I did I did not have a uh, Oppenheimer cosplay on my 2023 bingo. <laughs> I was, didn't didn't see that coming. <laughs> nah, it's, as soon as the whole the double feature meme started, yeah. you knew it was gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we'll make sure to. Uh, so, are they only offering it in the seventy millimeter, or are they also showing it like in like regular? You can you can watch it in regular thirty five millimeter projectors, but you know it's just not what Nolan wants. So, if you want those seats, those seats, there's plenty of those seats. Mm-hmm. If you want seventy millimeter, impossible. But I heard that IMAX is more likely not going to. It's exclusive to IMAX for three weeks, but I heard IMAX is going to plan to show it for longer than that. They'll keep some of the. For, they've already. I think yeah, they're keeping some of the screens. Okay. To just continue to show Oppenheimer for an unannounced period of time. That makes sense. Yeah, it's super yeah. crazy right now, I'm sure. So hopefully, yeah, weeks out, maybe a couple months out, maybe it'll calm down. I don't know. But uh, then maybe we'll take our chance and, and view it then. Yeah. But okay, cool. Yeah. So yeah, the imp- this may be totally inaccurate, but the impression I'm getting from John is 
if you go see Oppenheimer in a non IMAX theater, you have to deal with like a 20 second preview from Christopher Nolan just being like, <laughs> like you fucked up, man. Like this is not the way to watch this movie. Like, you know what? Fine. I'll take your money, but like you better go next door and watch this in IMAX after. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong, but that just seems like what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they take away the Nicole Kidman intro at the end. <laughs> right. Nolan's holding you. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. Well, um, people still clap for that, by the way. Yeah. For the um, Nicole Kidman thing? Yeah, what? Yeah. Okay, did I miss it? Like, <laughs> why do people clap for that? I don't get it. But people cheer and clap when she comes on. People cheer and clap when she finishes her monologue. And I don't mm. know. It's just yeah, become like, a thing now. I, I thought for for one minute i was like oh maybe they're happy that they're done watching trailers because <laughs> like now that i have the movie pass like i've seen the exact same trailers five times over and i'm like yeah i'm tired of that shit too but like i'm like i've also <laughs> seen her in literally 500 movies like i don't care about this scene either why am i clapping so the version you're seeing is actually cut it used to be much longer she had a much oh, longer god. monologue oh my god <laughs> interesting and i could not i was like oh my god and people would what people would do is they would either mouth or repeat the dialogue as she's doing her, her monologue. <laughs> That's like the worst version of going on a Disneyland ride when everyone knows the lines and it's like you hear the person behind you doing like the Haunted Mansion dialogue. But like, this is the way worse version of that. <laughs> wow. Daniel, hopefully Christopher Nolan hasn't been shaming you lately. What's going on with you? No, I'm seeing I'm seeing it on IMAX on Saturday. So, you know, I'm, I'm off the hook from him. He thinks I'm a, a good citizen. Um, <laughs> but um, not too much going on with me. Went to a baby shower on saturday there was a, a wonderful mix of food we had lucille's barbecue uh mexican fish tacos vietnamese spring rolls uh chinese noodles cha su dumplings uh king crab legs and portos <laughs> and fruit so it was a real wonderful mix um then uh as we'll we'll talk about on here uh went to poltergeist on sunday and then uh, Monday, got some hot pot with a friend from Taiwan who came to town, um, made the poor decision to get the super spicy. And uh, yeah, yesterday was a rough day for me. Um, but, you know, that's that's why they make sick days at work is for post spicy hot pot meals. So we're, we're doing better now. <laughs> Good. It's a lot to eat and a lot to uh, endure, but hopefully it's worth it. So far, yes. You know, we got we got a lot of a lot of room on my arteries before they clog up, so it's got them. <laughs> got I don't maximize. know if I can say this out for myself, but uh, okay. <laughs> good for you. <laughs> it's like must be nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Well, for myself, um, just eating as usual. Um, yeah, just a few places. Uh, hit up. Um, Recently, uh, one was out in a uh, city of Cyprus um, at a Home Depot of all things. There's a um, a spot there uh, called LJ's Little Cafe, and they've um, uh, they're known for making these uh, pretty killer breakfast burritos. And um, you know, people have been talking about them, just been seeing them on on Instagram and all that, and been meaning to um, give them a try. And, um, uh, a friend of mine, Jose, uh, reached out to me. I was, I was kind of thinking about, you know, hitting them up and then, and then he kind of messages me and says, Hey, you want to try these guys out? And so I thought it was good timing. So we went out there and, um, we had some, some great breakfast burritos. I mean, um, you know, with, uh, there are a couple that we tried. There's, you know, one kind of the, the OG that has, you know, your egg sausage, you know, um, potato they use uh they use tater tots I, I don't know if you guys have a preference on the kind of you know uh potato that's used in your breakfast burrito if it has one whether it's home fries or um tater tots or hash browns but um the tater tots were super crispy so i mean uh it was fresh when they when we got them um and so uh they're really crunchy and and just just a real nice you know crunchy bite um, and the tortilla, you know, is just right, not too tough, not, you know, and, and everything inside was just really satisfying. Um, and then there was this other one that had like, uh, this more like kind of cheese, uh, you know, filled with, uh, with some peppers and, you know, uh, things like that. And that was also very good. They also, um, um, sell hot dogs 
you know, I don't know if you guys have any memories, you know, I, I remember going out to, you know, Home Depot, um, with, uh, with my grandpa and, uh, we go to Home Depot there on, on Sunset and, uh, what, what street is that? Western, I want to say. Um, close enough. Yeah. And, uh, you know, every time we would, uh, we're done, you know, there would be a hot dog cart, you know, right outside. And, uh, I would always ask if I could, you know, get a hot dog and, uh, more often than not, yeah, he would agree reluctantly, but, uh, I would, it just kind of reminded me of that. So these guys also serve up hot dogs, but, um, definitely different, different, uh, toppings, different flavors. Um, we were just taught, it reminded me, I think because of our conversation, um, you know, previously about the, uh, about Ellie's danger dogs and, uh, they, they have such a dog, um, on their menu. Oh dear. Just, and so, you know, it's Dangerous. a bacon wrapped hot dog, you know, topped with, you know, the caramelized onions and, uh, peppers and, uh, um, you know, all the condiments, right. The mayo, mustard, uh, ketchup, that whole deal. So just a lot going on, but it was, uh, it was quite nice and quite satisfying. So we shared that and, um, yeah, to, to kind of find them in kind of this unsuspecting, you know, location, it's a bit far out, you know, it's definitely out of the way. Um, but, uh, I'm glad I, I visited there and, uh, it was, it was quite nice. So, um, if ever you find yourself out there, um, and, uh, just give them a try. That's, uh, LJ's little cafe. Yeah. Um, can you, um, can you start back at the top uh, when you introduced that about dining at a Home Depot? Because I don't know if you go to a Home Depot that's different from the ones I'm used to going to, but generally speaking, they don't sell edible things. It's mostly home goods and tools and no, hardware. The, the way is I this... understood it is you buy the chair at Home Depot and you bring it with you to the parking lot. Or you construct your own table. You know, like if you need a table, you, <laughs> you, you, you can construct that. You have all the parts, right, to build your own <laughs> dining set. To whatever. build your own grill, <laughs> build your own setup so that you, you can make your own burrito. Is it a pop up or how does that work? Is it inside the home? You know, depot? That, is it the garden center? That, that's a good question. You know, it's, you know, like what I was kind of um, alluding to before, you know, the hot dog carts at, outside the Home Depot, right? Those are just like, those are carts, right? And they just sell them out there or like little trailers. This looks like a structure that's actually, um, it's outside, like it's, uh, you know, it's, it's at the entrance of the Home Depot, but it looks like it's like attached. Like as a whole separate space, you know, they've got their own kitchen in there. You know, all the staff are working in there. Um, in the parking lot, huh? Not in the parking lot. Attached I mean, to the Home uh, Depot. Yeah. Let me see if. Uh, oh, interesting. I don't know if this know if gives any. you any context. I mean, so this is just like, just if you could, if I could account, somehow expand this picture, right? Like this is in front, like this is attached to the Home Depot, but like in front on the outside. So it's like, yeah, as you as you, uh, before you walk into the entrance, you kind of see this, um, you know, out there. it's like a full on like stand and everything. Right. I mean, you can order your breakfast burritos and your hot dogs and everything. I mean, it's, kinda, oh, wow. yeah, it's kind of interesting. Um, I mean, I've been to a few home depots in my lifetime and none of them have any structures attached to them. So that's a really unique setup for a home depot. Yeah. Yeah. It sure is. That's so, interesting. Yeah, I, it's the it's the first I've seen something like that. So I'm, um, but I'm pretty excited. <laughs> so, I, I will say, it kind of reminds me of the the Glendale Home Depot because mm-hmm. in the parking lot, like it has there's so there's like a building outside of it a that is court. like yeah, a, like a food something, right? But at the Glendale, it's not attached. It's not attached. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, at the Glendale, um, mm-hmm. by by um, Golden Road Brewery, yeah, right by the brewery. Oh, got it. Interesting. Okay. And the one on in Cypress Park also has like a little food court thing, but it's underneath the freeway overpass. Oh, interesting. Here, here's a better um, maybe angle of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. But you know, oh. you take a look at this, right? Probably a better angle, right? So, hmm. so the entrance. So just been slowly... We're definitely made from Home Depot, like a hundred percent. They they went in, bought it, and built it right there. Yeah, yeah. I think I see a price tag. They're definitely on sale. <laughs> Very cool. Kind of reminds me of that's that the Skechers food court you had told me about. Oh, um, yeah, the the food. Except spot. that one's a little yeah. bit more formal. Yeah. 
Do you get, is it yeah. formal because you have to wear Skechers? Is that the, the deal? No, no, it's like a... Well, it's very confusing because you think you're at Costco based off the menu and the setup. <laughs> okay. And the sign But is somehow right. you're at a Skechers. Yeah. 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 All the food items they offer are the same things you would find at a Costco food court with the same decorative elements. Yeah, there you go. That's Skechers. Oh, that's a, that's a Skechers? <laughs> <laughs> this is the Skechers in, uh, in Gardena, the one on 190th uh, and, uh, in Vermont. The Skechers I mean, out, on, outlet. Uh huh. I mean, on one hand, I, I'm kind of surprised more people don't do this, right? Because, I mean, you got to just look and be like, well, everyone loves Costco. Like, we'll just do the exact same thing. Like, it seems that's what like I a thought. no-brainer. That's what I thought. Is that like three dollars for a churro? Yeah, but it's like oh, a, see, you a don't pack of membership them. to Skechers, so you get other charge. <laughs> uh, no, but it looks true. like it's a uh, like a pack of them, right? Not just one. I think you, you get a discount if you buy something from the store. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. So certainly the menu is is uh, price wise is a little higher because you don't get those membership prices. But uh, like John said, maybe you buy a pair of uh, of Skechers and maybe they they bring that down for you. I don't know. <laughs> But um, Very but Costco signage aside, yeah, that's um, <laughs> those are places. Those are food places in front of non-food places. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Traditionally uh, non-food places. <laughs> I'm, I mean, it feels really like they're speaking to my life, which is like, okay, every once in a while, I have to do non-food things, like it's part of living. <laughs> but like, if I could do a food thing, that's even better. <laughs> right. It's all part of the lifestyle, right? It's a lifestyle thing. <laughs> And, and Skechers knows, and Home Depot apparently knows how to speak to you. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I really should be identifying with these brands more. It's like, you know, I need 50 cinder blocks, but I also need a breakfast burrito. So, <laughs> if I have, well, yeah, I him back if I have to yeah. do work at the house today, I'd like to have a breakfast burrito. <laughs> That's right. If I'm getting a manicure anyways, I may as well have crab legs next to me. <laughs> Wait a minute, that sounds counterproductive. <laughs> That's the next I guess best. you have to do the crab legs first, then you do the manicure. <laughs> either way, either way, support your local Or business. get a petty, then you can have as many oh, uh, crab legs yeah, as yeah. you want. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, so that's, um, again, that's LJ's Little Cafe. Uh, some other places, though, um, out in, uh, in East LA is a, a restaurant called uh, Azteca um, Tortilleria and... Uh, they they make a, they're known for making a distinct kind of um, burrito uh, as a, a chili relleno burrito, and um, it's it's probably just one of uh, that area's well known uh, bites. And um, if you're again if you're out there, it's uh, it's a really um, it's a really good uh, burrito. It's not a breakfast burrito. They have breakfast burritos there too, um, but they have these you know uh, regular burritos. Um, again, one of which is the, uh, the chili relleno. And then next door, um, is, a a bakery, um, called El Gallo Bakery. And so just buy a lot of like, you know, Mexican pastries, conchas, you know, things like that. Um, but yeah, those are all very, uh, very good. And they're right next to each other. So that's out there in, um, you know, in East LA. So, uh, both very good places to, to try. Um, but um, there's a, a restaurant uh, that we visited recently uh, called uh, Poltergeist. And um, it's a, I think it was the first time that, uh, you know, any of us had tried this restaurant. I, I don't know if uh, any of you had heard of the restaurant beforehand, um, but I think it was just kind of a first time thing for, for us. But um, yeah, let's get into it a little bit. So Poltergeist, um, the who behind Poltergeist is uh, Chef Diego Argotti. And I don't know, I, I haven't, I, I didn't know much about him beforehand necessarily. Like I, he actually had a pop-up before this called Estrano Things where he made basically street food pasta. And I had a chance of uh, trying that out at least once. Um, he also did... Uh, a series of pop-ups at button mash where he, where this restaurant actually resides now. Um, but, um, I think, you know, uh, a, I think a lot of the ways that people describe him, you, they use the word like words like frenetic, like chaotic, but certainly like creative, 
a lot of different types of flavors in in what he introduces to uh, to his food. There's an interesting. I think his backstory is pretty interesting, just because um, where he's come from, where he's trained from, uh, restaurants like Bestia and Bavel and Broken Spanish and things like that. But I think the full story. There's a podcast called the LA Food Pod that I think is worth listening to because he has a full episode with that, and uh, he kind of describes you know, kind of recounts his story of how he got to where he is now, which is pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, as far as the type of food, uh, we'll talk about it as we go along, but it's, you're not quite sure. You can't really put it in a particular box. I think a category of food, there's like a lot of things with Italian, there's like Asian, you know, but it doesn't really fit necessarily in one category very cleanly, which is pretty interesting. And I think makes part of the appeal. Um, but uh, as I said, they're out in um, in Echo Park in uh, in in the Button Mash, um, you know, arcade or barcade. Like, like inside? Yeah, yeah. They're, oh, interesting. Yeah. So if you've been to Button Mash, pre, I mean, before even before um, Poltergeist, you know, they served food out there. I think there was a um, it was a group called uh, Starry Kitchen that used to serve out the food there, um, uh, and. Um, But yeah, a lot of food that's like accessible for like hanging out, barcade, very casual food, right? So, Mm -hmm. um, but now we see that, but now we kind of see that. And there's still kind of a separate menu, you know, um, that's kind of more to that. But uh, this is a proper like full-on restaurant with like full-on seating and reservations and things like that. That's interesting. It is very interesting. It's so cool. Um, I think they started earlier this year if i'm not mistaken but they haven't been around too long as far as this restaurant goes um but yeah it's like taking kind of the techniques of fine dining and placing it in like this very casual spot um i've been rambling on but let let me get some thoughts from you know you uh, john and daniel what what do you guys your first impressions before we dive into the meal i guess yeah speechless is actually not a bad like summary of the impression but i was gonna say like high level is like compared eh, compared to like my expectations maybe or just like you know vibe it's yeah like uh fancy like definitely foodie kind of food casual setting and super mega fusion cuisine like (laughs) i don't even know like it's it feels like it stretches the word fusion to the max (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah yeah. I, I when I saw the menu, I really didn't know how to interpret it because it's called Poltergeist, which is a ghost of some kind. So you kind of think, oh, it's an interesting name for a restaurant. Not something you would normally expect for a fine dining restaurant. And I don't think it, I don't know if it, it markets itself as a fine dining restaurant, but probably the most surprising thing to me was that the food was felt like you were at a fine dining restaurant but then the prices don't reflect that so i didn't immediately think oh this is going to be a cool spot um and the the food itself was presented in such a way that was very creative very playful the food itself was very creative playful um a lot of fun flavors and like daniel said like it's fusion but it's i feel like it's more inventive than it is like a standard restaurant meal you would have. I can confidently say, I don't think I've had anything like most of the dishes we've had, like very confident to say it's like, yeah, I'm not finding that anywhere else. (laughs) Yeah. It's pretty unique. Very, um, yeah, very inventive. Um, so as far as the, uh, the meal itself, we have, um, kind of main categories. We have, they, they kind of put it as smalls, mediums and large. Right. Um, and the menu itself isn't terribly extensive. Um, there's, I'm looking at the menu now. There's like four items for each category, right? And so yep. I think we were just thinking, man, maybe we should, uh, we should just try one of each. <laughs> that was, I believe that was the discussion point. Was like, it's like, yeah, is all twelve? Is that too much? Five people. <laughs> Well, I think also to to an extent, like um, I I think I remember, you know, you we weren't necessarily expecting, um, you know, the serving sizes that we were getting, right, for maybe what we were paying or something. Like we were maybe expecting oh, 100%, smaller, right? Because yeah, because like 
Yeah, to John's point, right, when when you kind of see a menu like this, that's, you know, they're like, oh, it's tapa style, you know, it's meant to be shared. And and especially when you start reading, you're like, oh, this is kind of like some interesting stuff going in here. A lot of other restaurants you go to, like, yeah, you know, if they're like, oh, this is the sharing pasta, you're like, right. all right, everyone gets like a spoon, right? Yeah, you know, like everyone right. gets like two bites of the pasta. Whereas like here, I mean, I'm sure we'll talk about it, but here you're like, you're like, oh, shit, that's that's like a big plate. <laughs> right. A share salad is a whole head of romaine. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because our, um, you know, uh, our host was just kind of suggesting, oh, you can get maybe like two or three, you know, from each category, right? Uh, that should be enough. But again, yeah, and maybe maybe this is a failing on my part, right? But like anytime like one of the servers is like, oh, you should probably get like seven dishes. I'm mm. always like, so that's the low end estimate, right? Like, like we probably want more than seven, but maybe that's a that's my fault. Like maybe I should be like, you know, you're right. Like, <laughs> let's go with what you recommend. <laughs> no, you're just a higher achiever, Daniel. Never don't let them talk you down. Oh my gosh, yeah, uh, don't settle for less. As I think that's what it's saying there. But um, yeah, so it, it was interesting. Like when we were ready to order, right? She was asking us, you know, so so what are you gonna what are you gonna get? And I think we were just kind of still. Um, thinking about it or maybe we're a little reluctant to just kind of uh on you know what our decision is going to be but yeah we just decided to get um all of the smalls all the mediums and then one large you know of those dishes um and then some something to drink and some dessert as well so um but yeah i think overall i think that was a good move uh it was definitely a lot definitely uh plenty to share and try out and enjoy so um, let's just start off with the smalls. So we start off with uh, the Parker House Roll. And I'm going to, I guess, use the power of Yelp to find some of these pictures. I don't know. Is this... But you, is, took, you took so many pictures as we I went. did, but I didn't... Um, <laughs> I didn't load them on here, so kind of a waste, if anything. You prepare for your only fan. <laughs> my, uh, I apologize to my only fans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they want they want to see your pictures, Angelo. I know. Come Maybe. on. <laughs> well, I haven't. I didn't even share them yet. At least from now on, I didn't even share them on Instagram or anything. I need to. I need to get on that. Strap. But... You just wet their appetites and give them nothing. Yeah. All right. Well, um, they, they, they were waiting this whole half hour for this moment. <laughs> <laughs> and now nothing. <laughs> what a rip off. <laughs> Unsubscribe. Um, yeah, but the, the Parker house roll is a pretty sizable, uh, roll with the miso honey, the furikake and the Fresno butter. So, um, that's terrible lighting on that photo. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, okay, so these Yelp pictures are part of the problem why I was misled, right? Like, I saw this, and I was like, oh, this is like a roll, you know? It's like, I get garlic knots, like, I know yeah. how big that is. Uh -huh. But then this thing yeah. showed up, and I was like, this is the size of my face. <laughs> <laughs> is this better? I don't know, I mean... Oh. <laughs> a little bit, a little it is bit. better. Yeah. Especially because this dial-up of butter is a little smaller than the roll itself, <laughs> to give you some actual It context. seems a little There's disproportionate, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, use, but, use the fingers in the background for for reference. For reference, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. So, what are your impressions? What what what, what did you think? I, I think like, I was expecting a much harder. Sorry, Dan. I think I was expecting a much harder roll when I saw it. I thought it would be like a crispy shot. I was kind of like a garlic knot. I was very surprised by how soft it was, hmm. um, and it had a lot of fun the fruity cocktail i don't know what was in it i know i think there's some seaweeds and sesame but there are things in there i didn't quite recognize either mm -hmm. but together with the, the the fresno butter it was really good it was really really nice uh very soft very moist it was almost like a cinnamon roll that was somebody had forgotten to add the cinnamon and the sugar and instead decided to go in a different direction that's a good one i like that one yeah i was i i was a fan as well i was surprised by the fresno chili butter like normally i feel like normally anytime i get like one of these like ooh, it's like a fancy butter i'm always like okay it's 90 percent butter and like 10 percent something else mm -hmm. but this was like oh this is this is pretty spicy like <laughs> this is definitely some chili butter but it went really well with the, the the honey and the rest of the roll so it was a solid solid dish yeah i i agree um it was nice pairing of um something sweet 
uh, and something like savory with the with the forakake. Um, yeah, the sweetness was that that miso the miso honey. Um, yeah, so I mean, like you see these seemingly like there's the introduction like these Asian you know influences these flavors here and then, um, but yeah, it's it's in kind of this form that we're not really familiar with, and then you pair that with this Fresno uh, butter, right? It's something something with a little heat, and it's like I don't even know what this is. It's uh, it's but overall it was it was quite good. Um, but then after that, I I think the the serving the pace of the uh of the dishes were reasonable i think like the the yeah. next ones that came out one after the other they were they were quite uh reasonable so the next one we had was the green goddess salad and um you actually got it i'm telling you i mean it seems <laughs> not by HR, but yes <laughs> this is not a food group that we cover all that often if at all on this uh, on this program but um i'm telling you this was uh something else to uh to consider gem lettuce coconut lime uh tarragon and pandan flakes so yeah those pandan flakes were delicious i i got really excited when i saw them like i don't know i was i was feeling like this is like cereal on my salad and i was like yeah. finally i can i can dig this salad and and maybe it wasn't quite cereal but like those i mean it was great those were like a good crouton substitute Gem lettuce was good, and it's like yeah. it's kind of hard to tell from the picture, but it's just like a giant stack of like lettuce, lettuce, yeah, lettuce, layered, lettuce. layered of yeah, layers of lettuce. Um, yeah, so it's, it's kind of funny, like Rice Krispies. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what I thought when I got it. I was like, "Ooh, how fun!" There's rice Krispies on my salad. <laughs> but then I was like, "Oh, Rice Krispies are kind of bland," but these are not bland by any means. Like Dan said, they're really fun, really flavorful. And they're very generous at the two because as you dug normally like with salad, all the good stuff's at the top. All the toppings go last. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Goes all in the good first, stuff. You get all the good stuff and then yeah. you're left with just the fiber at the bottom. You don't want the fiber at the bottom. But this salad, like they, they were very thoughtful. They scattered those crispies throughout the entire throughout. thing. Yeah. As I removed leaves, I was like, oh, there's more. But wait, there's more. It was long. I, again, I think kind of just what we said at the top. It was a really fun, yeah. creative, inventive menu. This is kind of a tangent, but, but this very, is very good. this is um, similarly to what I do when you get a stack of pancakes and um, you take the butter and then you just like tuck them in every, between, every, right? Yeah, every pancake. That way yeah. you get the distribution of the butter, right? That's normal, right? I think it's the normal. butter sandwich. I'll say I'm, yeah. I'm I'm not a pancake person, but my version of that is in a waffle. Like I I mm-hmm. fill each hole with syrup. Uh, hey. Perfect. Yeah, so it's like yeah, similar. Like there's there's a certain amount of surface area on your mm-hmm. dish, That's and correct. like you should maximize that. That's, That's there's correct. an equation I think for this. So McDonald's has a McGriddle series. <laughs> You're telling me in lieu of the the sausage and the cheese and the eggs, you just like a butter McGriddle. That's fine. You tell me you don't do that. <laughs> Is that not- I can't say I have, but I can, but I can empathize with Daniel's uh, filling the, the the waffles. Yeah, it's the same concept, just with butter. <laughs> oh, your training's got to go a lot harder, John. Well, there you go. <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a long way to go to succeeding you, my child. You were free too, by the way. You were able to sneak away off screen. You were free. Why did you come back? <laughs> we got you obligations, unfortunately. Well, okay, yeah. He had his chance. Right, all the threats he issued behind the scenes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, let's uh, move on with the uh, the other the, re- the real uh, the other salad we were talking about. Actually, the Thai Caesar. Um, so this has uh, lemongrass and the rice rice crouton. That's what you see here, like stack kind of here. Um, Along the side, um, what else? Uh, the and smoked anchovies, Parmesan, yeah. So that's part of the dressing, yeah. Yeah. So, what did you think about this? Because the lemongrass, I, th- um, I mean, there was lemongrass there. I, I thought it was like it was a good amount. I don't know. I don't think it was too strong, um, but I can imagine that people who maybe are not into it might think it's too much. But what do you guys think? So, I guess I guess two thoughts. One, the rice crispy crouton in this picture does not give it justice. To me, I feel like when it came out, it looked like a high school volcano project. Like it was, <laughs> it was quite impressive how tall that rice crispy crouton was. It sure was. It actually was. Yeah. Um, and then 
Yeah, the lemongrass, I was worried it would be too much because I feel like I took the first bite and I was like, damn, that's that's strong. But mm. it actually didn't build. So it's like as I ate more, I was like, oh, no, it's it's not becoming too much. It's just like it's it's like the same level of like lemongrass. Yeah, so it, it was actually quite enjoyable by the end. Okay. For me. OK, good, good. John? Yeah, I think lemongrass is a hard flavor for some people to grasp, because, especially if you're not used to it. It's like it's popular in Southeast Asian cooking, um, yeah. but if you're not used to having it, it can become overpowering really quickly. But I think it was very thoughtful the amount they use here. It's almost like instead of using a vinaigrette, they just use lemongrass because it had that citrusy, acidic flavor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, like Daniel said, those croutons were were amazing. It looked like uh, uh, the Tower of Sauron without the idol <laughs> at the top. Yeah, it was menacing. It was menacing. And they sprinkled this green powder over it. I have no idea what was in the powder. Had a little bit of sweetness to it, a little bit of umami. Uh, but it just worked really well because then you had texture yeah. of the crouton. You had the salad inside. You had the citrus. You got the sweet. You yeah. got the savory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't thought... know why I am, I'm going on and on about salad, but salad was really good. <laughs> this, this is definitely a departure from our typical conversations. Um you know, you just lost your only fan. Shame. <laughs> so, I didn't come here to hear about salads. <laughs> All right, pack it up. We're done. I know. Back to the nutrient we, dense. This is a uh, jumping the shark. I think the equivalent to that. We've just <laughs> kind of gone too far. So people, uh, yeah. Well, that's fine. Um, we can we can praise uh, these salads all, all day, but that's fine. I think we've gone past the salads already now. So the next. Thank God. The, the, the next uh, the next dish is the last of the smalls, and this is the honey walnut prawns. So um, I, I recall um, that this was generally well received. Um, so the it's these prawns uh, with a little bit with some cupy. <laughs> the worst pictures. Okay, yeah, our production value has dropped a lot. Why the hell are we using Yelp pictures? <laughs> Come on now. Um, <laughs> Let's just uh, work with what we got here. Um, but that's uh, but we have the uh, the what do we say the the prawns the kewpie, uh the walnuts candied walnuts, <laughs> and in, this thing on the left is I think the orchata panna cotta, is that right? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Right. on a uh, crispy rice salad. So yeah, I mean this this was a great great bite. I, I think there was also some discussion on. Um, I guess whether or not to eat the entirety of the shrimp, um, but you do it. I do proudly. Yeah. You eat shrimp tails. Yeah. No, I have no problem with that. Well, shrimp tail and head the whole body. That's fine. Yeah. 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 All right. Let me, let me hear you guys what you have to say about that. I think for me, this was my, my worth it winner. And maybe I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself if this is your format, but this was probably the most surprising thing that came out because, I mean, if I remember correctly, I think it was around eighteen dollars for this dish, which for shrimp uh -huh. or like seafood or prawns, like yeah. normally you, I would expect to pay a lot more. So again, I was like, oh yeah, it's going to be a small little dinky thing, maybe like four or five shrimps. Yeah. But these prawns were like they were serious prawns. They were the size of sausages, uh, and you got four of those. And as you saw in the picture, a lot of very different components that I would never have with prawns. I never thought I would have eat orchata panna cotta with a shrimp. Uh, but together, it just it somehow it worked. It was really, really nice. Perfectly fried. A great flavor. My worth it winner. Mm. Same. <laughs> I'd, yeah, I'd personally agree as well. That one was that one was delicious. And as John said, that was that was the moment where I was like, all right, they're, they're not messing around on the quantity here because like... <laughs> Like normal, yeah. As he said, I I was expecting like five like shrimp cocktail size mm -hmm. shrimps, right? And yeah. these came out as like, oh yeah, like Full oh no, prawns. these are yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no. Although as far as the sh the prawn head, I will I will throw myself out there as the person mm -hmm. who like I love this dish, but I'm still not a prawn head fan. Just mm. not not my jam. Interesting, my child. What are your thoughts on prawn heads? I mean, I know it's edible, but I don't but personally eat it either. It's all the brainy parts Except and all that. I mean, it's like I would suck out. I would suck out the uh, the innards. Yes. Okay, sure. I just wouldn't eat the whole ass head. Oh, like you I do. see. But you know, this is it's like it's everything is fried. It's like nice and cr it's like crispy. So okay, so it reminds. Yeah, so I'm almost, I'm almost the opposite of my chow here. I liked eating the fried outside. 
but the inner it's oh. like like i don't know I, I feel good with the amount of brains in my body like i don't particularly feel a need to eat more <laughs> well i need more i well, need some to compensate I, I need, exactly i i need more brains too so. i'm severely lacking I like a restorer. <laughs> Yeah, no, that I've was had some, uh, some. Yeah, I've had some pond heads before where they really were not good, uh, uh, and you really should have avoided them. But this one, these ones, I thought were nice. Okay. They it just tasted really fresh. Yeah, yeah. Super. But I could see, I could see also they do have a distinct flavor to it. So it's kind of like lemongrass. It's like it's not for everybody. Yeah, but um, I I really enjoyed it. I was gonna say I I did share this you know during during the meal, but um, it reminded me of. Uh, a meal I had in Vegas. They have a well-known um, Thai restaurant there, Lotus of Siam, and they have this uh, prawn uh, dish. I forget. I, it's it's literally called prawn something, like crispy prawn something. But um, it's it's it reminds me of this. Like the whole shrimp is prepared. It's fried, you know, super crispy, and you can eat the entire shrimp, tail, head, and all, um, you know, um, with hopefully no regrets, but yeah, it's, it's, it's made to be consumed like in that way, you know, the entire thing. So, um, but yes, to have these additional kind of, um, you know, flavors, the, the sweetness from the, uh, and creaminess of the, the panna cotta and, you know, some of the candied walnut in there. Uh, and you know, you have the crispiness of the shell, right. Of the shrimp, but then you also have that again, crispy texture of the, uh, the rice salad that's there too. Um, you see, it's just these interesting kind of intersections of, you know, some Asian, maybe some uh, Hispanic flavor, some, you know, just kind of coming together. It's uh, quite, quite interesting. Um, but it sounds like, again, yeah, that was probably the more well-received, um, you know, dishes that we, that we enjoyed. So those are all the, the smalls, supposedly, like what you would have as, I imagine as, are they supposed to be appetizers? I mean, they're just smaller dishes, but, um, but we're, we'll move on to the, uh, the mediums. So we got all of the mediums. And so the first of which is the Mapo tofu stuffed cabbage. And, um, that is the, it's, uh, tofu, uh, um, shiitake mushroom. I'm just reading off here. Coconut rice. Um, the chili paste all wrapped in this like cabbage deal. So what are your thoughts on that dish? I'm trying to find something here. Maybe I'll, but yeah, go ahead. What do you guys think? John, I think you were, I think you were a bigger fan than me. So I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you start. (laughs) It was fine. Okay. It wasn't, it wasn't bad. It, so, so I think again, like this menu looks so simple when yeah. you read off the ingredients. Like it's really hard to visualize what's going to come out. And I think part of the theming here too is is in the name, right? Some of these foods look really jarring, yeah. and I think this was one of those. So it, it, yeah, it is mapo tofu stuffed in a cabbage. But when it showed up, it's drenched in this like black semi viscous sauce that's a bit on the sweet side. Um, there's certainly mapo tofu in there. Um, but it's it's just it's just a very different preparation from what you're probably used to thinking of when you think of mapo tofu. Uh, I enjoyed this dish. Uh, it wasn't a huge favorite, but I definitely would not say it was a, a one that I disliked. Mm. It was just a very different take on mapo tofu, and I do remember seeing some Yelp reviews of people complaining about this dish, and I can totally see where they're coming from. In that, you probably read this menu thinking. Some mapo tofu and cabbage, and then you get this little pot that's mm. dr- drenched in this mm. black, softy liquid in this cabbage that's impossible to cut, and then all the tofu will spill out as you cut it. But yeah, I think the flavors worked. Maybe it was a tad on the sweet side, but it was a fun, fun interpretation for me. Yeah, I'll, I'll just pl- I'll just plus one most of those. I'm gonna I'll oh, save really? myself okay. some effort. But yeah, <laughs> was those. it difficult to cut? I don't know. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't. Um... I tried to portion it out for everybody. Mm-hmm. So I started my first cut, and I started my second cut, and then I gave up, and I gave, I gave this uncut mess to to the rest of the table. Just push it off to everyone. You work for it, you know. But, okay. Right. Yeah. Oh, all right. Nice. Um, 
What'd you think? Yeah, I thought I thought it was um I wasn't really sure what to expect. For some reason, again, my dumb brain is thinking, oh, that uh that the whole thing, the the outside, that's the tofu. <laughs> like, that's not the tofu. I'm not I'm sure sorry, why. What? I'm not sure the why. Giant, okay, I thought, the giant cabbage looking thing is right. actually a really fancy tofu. That's what I, is it cake? Is it cake? <laughs> well, on the menu it does say vegan, so maybe that threw you off because you're like, certainly oh, did. it's not all be tofu. It certainly did. Um but no, I, I think you're right. It was a little bit on the sweet side, but uh overall was a uh, you know, all the flavors were there. I mean, you, you know, I could get the tofu, the the mushroom in there um, and the cabbage. I, I again, I thought I didn't think it was maybe maybe because most of it was gone, but I didn't think whatever was left that I cut through was difficult to get to. But um, yeah, that was that was enjoyable as well. But so the uh, the, the next one that came from that was the uh, the octopus burrata. And so that's. Um, so it starts off with this uh, a, a squid ink fry bread. So uh, that's just bread. Um, fry bread is actually a, I think it's a, a thing of the South. Um, it's bread, but fried. Um, but uh, it's dark because of the squid ink. And then on top of that, you have this octopus cooked in a in an alpa store kind of marinade. Um, so you have supposedly more of those citrusy, you know, kind of flavors in there, spices and whatnot. Um there's this other what is this celery leaf uh cherimoya no what is that i can't even yeah read. i think it was cherimoya yeah okay. yeah thank you uh with a potato confit and a tomatillo uh mustarda a lot of which i don't quite understand but um i think i know that i enjoyed it the octopus um was was very flavorful super Nice to bite into, not overly chewy or nothing, but uh, it was quite nice. What do you guys? What do you guys think about that? I was a fan of this one, um, although just to like, I feel like as you're reading it off, was it just to underscore maybe how weird some of these dishes were and how kind of innovative they were? Yeah. I think at one point we were talking at dinner, and I think it was you who was who said, Angelo, you're like, oh, that dish actually wasn't as crazy as the rest, but like, I mean, think about what you just read off. This was al pastor octopus like yeah. squid ink fry bread tomatillo like mustarda chermoya like i don't know i've I've never had a burrata dish with like all these pieces together yeah um but it it came together i don't know you kind of you kind of assembled it all into one bite it was really nice i digged it yeah real good john i think this was, it was probably one of the prettiest dishes they had mm-hmm. um it was just there was just a lot of components a lot of contrasting colors it was delicious. It's a very, um, very subtle also, dig to the lack of picture right now. It's like, this was the prettiest thing, <laughs> and I can't see it. <laughs> right. All right. Gorgeous. Well. Gorgeous. Um, <laughs> Interestingly yeah. enough, I just uh, started to, like, kind of share some of the pictures, uh, but I messed up, and, like, that is literally the one that is not on there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, cool. the, the, dumb, um, the dumb and hungry is strong with this one, so. Uh, let me it's just the dumb tonight. <laughs> just dumb, very dumb. <laughs> Always more dumb than hungry. That's usually what it is. Um, but you know that was uh, that was good too. If I can, I'll go back to it if I can. I'm gonna add it. But um, anyway, but yeah. Um, what came after that? Let's see. We have next was the broccoli beef ravioli, yeah. which is a ravioli dish. Ravioli. Uh, well, okay. well, yeah. If you look at the picture, you'd be quite mistaken to think or you you could was it if you don't see the ravioli be very understandable <laughs> yeah totally um so the broccoli okay this is a very rudimentary presentation of our meals but this is the best i got if you're asking oh if you want my own my own pictures on there but there you go <laughs> what is this <laughs> what happened to you production value <laughs> <laughs> We've uh, gone down in budget a little bit, you know, so we need to. In a word, dog. <laughs> That's what happens when you start paying people to be here. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking up the budget. <laughs> if you want, I can do I can do Pictionary with this. I can, yeah, I can draw a little square and be like, ravioli. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this is what we have. <laughs> <laughs> 
the uh, the dish uh, I contained. Love it when we use word processor to uh, to handle images, <laughs> the perfect application. It is actually, yeah. Um, ultimate. You should have printed a PDF while you're at it. I could have. I'll save it as a PDF. <laughs> perfect. Um, Print it out and post it on your cubicle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we have? We have short rib, um, dark soy. Uh, brown butter, broccolini, and Parmigiano Reggiano. So, um, yeah, the 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 so it's ravioli, right? So it the short rib is stuffed in the in the ravioli, and then and then kind of you know uh, topped with all these these other fixings on here. Um, the uh, can you guys remind me? Is you know this this middle part this. The, is this the brown? I don't know what this is. This middle part here. The, this was the crunchy The middle bits. part was the... Yeah, those were the fried onion bits or fried shallots, sorry. Uh, yeah, I think it was just a little crispy accents. Right, exactly. Um, Wait, there was there was a pleasing number of those for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I thought overall the dish was great. I thought it was pretty rich, actually. Um, a little strong on the, on the dark soy because I guess a little more salty. Um, but overall, I think it was... Uh, yeah, it was it was quite good, but yeah, it was. I think after even like two or three pieces of the the ravioli, I think like I'm done. Um, but uh, yeah, that was that was my exact issue. Was like it was good, but I I think for me, I didn't even make the two or three. I I ate one and I was like, because probably at this point, I was starting to feel. I was like, I was like, oh man, the the waitress was right. Like we we got a lot of food. Like yeah, <laughs> like this is this is this is risky. So after I mean, eating one, I was already was like, all right, I need to be be cautious here. Yeah. <laughs> Right. You're like, there's one Angelo at the end of the table. He'll finish this. <laughs> well, thankfully I did, but I mean, it was still, you know, I mean, if I were eating that on my own, I feel like that, I think that's like it, right? That's the whole meal, you know? Um, yeah, that would be, that'd be a lot to just, if you go by yourself and you're, you're chowing down, that's not the dish I'd go for. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. It's very rich. Uh, it's had nice flavor. The raviolis themselves had nice flavor. I was expecting like two or four or five raviolis standard serving size at an Italian restaurant. There's probably like 12 in there. Yeah. Um, and the raviolis themselves were nice. I think what was challenging for me was that dark soy brown butter sauce because I think like others alluded to earlier, it was very salty and then there was some sweetness to it too. So it just made it yeah. hard to work through. Mm. And it's a bit tacky. So it's not like you can just scrape off the sauce. Uh, the sauce had clung on like mm -hmm, tar mm -hmm. to the dinosaur. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but I, I mean, again, it was, uh, I definitely, I knew I enjoyed that. That was, uh, that was a good, uh, good dish too. Um, from there, there was one more medium and that's the yellow curry bucatino. And, um, apparently it was formerly a, green a green curry. curry, but now it is yellow. And, oh. um, let me bring that up for you in my very high quality presenta uh, presentation here. So, <laughs> all right. Um, we spared the listeners at home, so don't watch it. Just, uh, just listen. Just try to um, keep up with uh, with the descriptions we have here. But the yellow curry bucatino. This is kind of uh, maybe one of the few kind of. Uh, types of dishes maybe not exact dish that carries over from uh chef diego's uh, uh you know time with his pasta pop-up you know estrano thing so uh focus on a lot of pastas and things like that so this is like an example of one of those um you have this noodle i, I say noodle singular vaduvan that is an important point here that's yeah. one noodle <laughs> it yeah one noodle. it was one noodle they they did emphasize that so uh, and they're right. So <laughs> um, with that, we have some interesting other pieces here. We have the sweet corn. We have this red walnut, ajika, uh, tomatillo zug, and pal uh, palomitas. Um, which one? Yeah. Where do we start? I don't know. I, I'm gonna I mean, let you guys. I, still, I mean, we talked about it, but the one noodle, I mean, like, I've never had a noodle dish where, like, I eat it by cutting off pieces of the noodle. Like, yeah, that was that was new, but <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it totally the yellow curry flavor was on point. I mean, it was it was totally yellow curry. Um, the you know the zoo and and the red ajika. I mean, they were they were kind of fun to mix in. 
Um, we struggled a little bit with with the corn, but that was a little bit hard to share with everybody. But the rest was great. What um, what what do you think of the reasoning is behind the addition of the corn, both the corn rib and the popcorn? I don't remember if they explained. I don't remember if they explained, but just looking at your picture, it kind of reminds me of like, I don't know, a cyclops with an eyebrow. So maybe it's maybe that's what they're doing. I mean, it's you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's just the look. Yeah, yeah. The men, the men, the it's menu was already pretty natural. out there. So yeah, right. I could. it had to be jarring. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I guess when you so, get it at the right yeah. angle, sure. <laughs> So yeah, Dan and I were in Italy not too long ago, and we did have our share of bucatini there. So bucatini is the pasta with the hole in the center, but it's a, it's a noodle. Mm-hmm. Um, did not have a single bucatini that was one long strand, but that was that was kind of fun about this dish. And obviously, it required them to take some time to plate that too, right? And just to yeah. get that shape just yeah. right. <laughs> so I think it kind of does talk to this restaurant of like there's a level of detail, there's a level of complexity to these dishes that again, I just wasn't expecting to have at a barcade. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna deviate from your your format of talking about food and actually quickly pivot to a language lesson. So, in the menu, this is called bucatino, and in Italian, for a masculine word, they typically end in an O. If you make that a plural, you would drop the O and make, put it as an I or, mm. or replace it with an I. Mm. So oh. typically, when you see bucatini, it's because there's multiple bucatinos, this menu actually gets it correct in stating that it is indeed a One. singular noodle. Jeez. So, okay, so this is why I've never seen bucatino on a menu anywhere, because yeah. no one else is like, I'll just give you no one. One. <laughs> the one noodle. <laughs> like, like, have fun with that one. Like, start, start slurping and don't stop, you know, just keep going the yeah. whole way. <laughs> this is a perfect laid-in trap noodle. That must be... Uh, um, that was a very, I guess, in, in many, many ways, it's a thoughtful way of considering the menu, right? It's not just throwing that name in there. It's, yeah, actually kind of staying true to what it is. <laughs> the only, yeah, I, I, my job was to learn Italian for this trip, and this is the only time it has now paid off, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I appreciate it. Really at all. <laughs> well, we, uh, we appreciate it. Thank you, uh, Duolingo. All right. Um, <laughs> so that wraps up all the all the mediums. Um, let's see. So that lastly, uh, we have the large, and we opted for one large dish, um, and that one was the Penang lamb neck. So I think we've um, seen kind of maybe the likes of lamb uh, from restaurants like. Um, Bestia and Bavel, and which is, you know, uh, where uh, Chef Diego really kind of got his, you know, a lot of his training from. And so we see a menu item on that here, very highly, you know, and very high quality uh, presentation. But um, we have the, uh, this kind of saffron bao, uh, which here with the persimmon, I, I'm just reading this off. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Persimmon, amba, conserva raro, uh, pomegranate molasses, and Brussels kraut, right? So, so um, it's, you know, you have the Penang here, and this is also a pineapple, was it like pineapple habanero deal sauce? Yeah, and, yeah, then, yeah, yeah. and then all the things I mentioned were on this second plate here, where you like, you know, you kind of build a little bit, a little bow for yourself. Um, and you, you know, uh, make a little, yeah, bao, taco, whatever you want to call it, folded bread thing. So, um, hot dog. yeah, hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was the Penang lamb neck. So, uh, go ahead. I mean, this was, I really enjoyed this one. I think the flat, the lamb was like super, uh, very flavorful, not gamey at all. Uh, very easy to, you know, to take off the bone and, and all that. And then all the flavors, just very fun. A lot of you know, fruity, acidic, you know, kind of, uh, you know, kind of flavors in there too. Um, overall, a great, a great dish. Yeah. I, I mean, think at totally... the stage of the meal, oh. sorry, mm-hmm. don't go for it. Go ahead, oh. I was going to say at the stage of the meal, I had hit such a impenetrable wall that mm-hmm. it made it very difficult 
to appreciate this dish. Um, but it, <laughs> with yeah. that said, I still thought it was very, very delicious. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, you mentioned Bavel has something like this. You mentioned Bessie has something like this. Girl on the Go also has something like that. They do a lamb oh, shank sure. and it comes with like some breads on the side and mm-hmm. some sauces mm-hmm. and jam. So it yeah. very much is similar to those other places, but this is twenty nine dollars. This blew my mind. That's twenty nine dollars. Yeah. The price point is excellent. Vertebrae. There was, yeah, it was insanely tender. Yeah, uh, it totally competes for quality. Like the quality, I yeah, was, it's like it's totally comparable, but way cheaper. <laughs> way cheaper. Yeah, this is sixty dollars dish at the other restaurants. Easily, um, easily. But but it was it was it was great. Lots of great balance from the little that I was able to taste. I appreciated it very much. It, I mean, speaking of like the serving size and you know, comparable things, like it also reminds me, you know, at uh, Momofuku, right? Like they have the yeah. pork som, right? The the braised pork mm-hmm. shoulder. Uh, obviously, that's a larger serving, you know, a lot more going on, but, you know, same deal. All the little ingredients that you build your own, you know, kind of little bow thing. And um, yeah, but, but yeah, uh, that dish is uh, maybe like three or four times the cost of what this is. I think, but again, to, to the point that it's um, definitely more um, that this is a quite quite a good value. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean the flavors overall. I mean, yeah, I just put a little bit of everything in there, all those different uh, pieces and those ingredients, and um, makes a very flavorful, like satisfying. Um, like, and then you know, again, I know everyone was like very full at that point, and you know, I was, you know was the garbage disposal and everything at that point. But yeah, no, going through all the, you know, the bones, you know, you have all the nice, um, you know, treasures and little bits in there, right. In the vertebrae and whatever it's like, um, that's, that's the gold stuff, right? Like that's real good. Um, that's, you know, you're the garbage disposal when you're the one actively eating the bones. (laughs) Well, again, that bone was very well cleaned off by it the- <laughs> sure was because there's a lot of treasures in those bones and you got to dig from um and uh it's it's very satisfying uh very rich and um super flavorful so really enjoyed that um that's an insult to garbage disposals everywhere but yeah no that's fine um i mean you're being compared to one is yes <laughs> that's right. um i wanted to kind of go back um at least I think this was the one thing we didn't get to show. This was the, uh, the, um, octopus, right? Now I'm just curious from the octopus. I don't know if we mentioned this. Did it, it does say in the menu that it's an octopus al pastor. So when you bit into it, did, did you kind of get those flavors? The, you know, some reminisce or some remote flavor of, um, al pastor or were you not? That was the al pastor was definitely not like, I got it a little bit, but that Mm -hmm. wasn't, what came through strongly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. If there was al pastor, I, mean, I don't doubt that there was al pastor, but because of all the other components in that dish, I did not notice it. Yeah. There, there definitely was like a lot um, going on there, but I think the octopus itself was, you know, uh, well cooked. It was just nice to. Oh, super. Yeah. yeah. Not, yeah. not rubbery, not dried out. Like, yeah. Yeah. Great octopus. Yeah. So that kind of rounds out, you know, all the kind of the dishes. Um, let's touch before we go into uh, the dessert part of it. Let's kind of um, go through the uh, the dishes we've had, and I know we've already kind of alluded to like what we really liked here. So I don't think that's going to be much of a, a question. But um, from the from all the smalls. Um, Again, I think we answered this already. It seems like the honey walnut prawns like really stood out. Yeah, I don't know if that's we all agree on that. Yeah, um, agreed. If I chose a salad, you'd never have me back here. So yes, the prawns. <laughs> I would. Okay, this is going to be sacrilegious. Uh, the prawns are my favorite. Let's let's get that out of the way before I get shot. But I would say as a whole, mm. I think I did like like the smalls average rating for me was probably like the highest of the sections. Like mm. as a whole, I really enjoyed. Pretty much every small. Yeah. So if you could just kind of have that category of food, you would you would yeah. go towards that. And I'm sure the the prawns really carry you know carry a lot of it. Yeah. Right? Certainly. Yeah. Um. And then from the mediums, uh, we tried all of those. So which one of those would you say kind of stood out for you? For me, I'd say the octopus would okay. be number one of those four. Okay. 
Yeah, I would I would probably agree on the Oc- octopus. I I did enjoy the Bucatino. Um, as we talked about the the Mapa tofu and the raviolis, I I liked both, but they were just both a lot. So like. Yeah. You know, like I felt happy with the one or two bites I had of each. Mm. I didn't, I didn't yeah. feel a strong need where I'm like, damn, I, I wish there was more. I was like, yeah. that was good, but I'm, I'm done. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, you know, surprisingly, I might, I, I might, uh, you know, side with the, uh, the mapu tofu on this one. This one is uh, quite good, even though it is uh, contains no meat. Um, so that was, uh, there must be something. Uh, good in there. I guess there, there's something to be said about not having to cut your own mapo tofu. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, so okay, and then and then lastly, obviously with the large, we only had the Penang, but um, I think that was. I mean, it's kind of a thumbs up overall. I mean, like it was. Good. Yeah, of all the larges, yeah. I think that was my favorite one. Yeah, definitely, definitely <laughs> number one. No, I mean, Definitely, if you put it amongst like all the dishes we had in in the meal, it would yeah. be in the top like couple for me for sure. Yeah. Well, then let's narrow it down S-tier. further. I know this is hard because, so okay, we have the 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 prawns, right? And let's say the octopus, and then the the lamb. I mean, like from all from those three. Oh, that's um, not hard. It's the prawns. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's the prawns. It's my worth it winner. Okay, perfect. Um, I mean, they, they were just, they were very delicious. They were sizable. Mm-hmm. Um, I, it helps at that point in the meal. I was like, you know, we were just coming off two salads. I was still pretty hungry. Like uh, <laughs> the, time, the timing was excellent for like, uh, oh, okay. let's let's and, knock it back. Yeah. <laughs> With palate cleanser. Yeah. Excellent. I just checked all the boxes. Yeah. Great flavor. Very surprising. Fun combination. Very creative. Very inventive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's great. Um. So now we kind of got that out of the way. Now we move on to kind of our, uh, the dessert portion. So the dessert at this time, like they served like three items and I forgot how it was phrased, but basically John, we somehow just convinced ourselves. I mean, went with off John, what John said, like we just get like the two, there's like two of the three or whatever that from there. So that's what we got. So one of which is the, uh, squash blossom olive oil cake. Um, so this is with cardamom ricotta balsamic and uh a creamsicle sorbet so um and then i'll go into the other one we also had a uh a banana split um let me find that but yeah that has the unique flavors uh with a little bit of uh banana chips on there so go ahead and uh why don't we talk about yeah talk about that um the the olive oil cake what what do you guys think of that well, let's go back really quickly to your, your comment on decision making because the I think the conversation we were having was, hey, we can't really decide. And I said, I'm I'm good doing the olive oil cake or the banana split. Mm, mm-hmm. And then or. through a classic or and then through the classic game of telephone or became Anne. So we ended up with <laughs> two desserts. So, which in hindsight was a blessing. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so let's talk about the olive oil cake. <laughs> Sure, go ahead. Talk about it. Go nice. so, That's good. So yeah, this is yeah, to allude this is not the part that I think John's alluding to as much, but yeah, this one was good. Um yeah, olive oil cake is I'm trying to think. I think the first olive oil cake I had was a few years ago, and I remember at the time I was like, oh, that's kinda weird. But I've I've enjoyed pretty much every olive oil cake I've had and turns out balsamic is a great ingredient for dessert. Like mm. can't go wrong with it. Sorbet was nice just it just all worked it wasn't super you know it's funny compared to everything else we ate for dinner that was probably much more mild than like uh a bunch of the other dishes but it was nice (laughs) okay good yeah olive oil cake ricotta balsamic like those all feel like they go together Mm -hmm. the squash blossom was fried that was nice and sweet maybe the the red herring and this one was the creamsicle sorbet i've never had creamsicle featured on anything other than by itself it's usually a star on its own <laughs> uh, but to have it on this plate it was different but i think it worked very well um mm. just add added more more profile more dimension to, mm. to each bite yeah okay yeah um probably say a lot of the same it was a good it was a good one um now that might we'll take a, a different take now here with uh, our other dessert the banana split so that includes, like I said, that 
It's interesting that I'm looking at the menu now. So they start off with unique seasonal flavors, right? Each word. Yeah, they didn't specify. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but each right. word is in quotation marks. Unique. <laughs> Seasonal, seasonal flavors. Uh, and flavors. Yes. <laughs> flavors. You know the important. Yeah, fla- flavors being in quotes is really important because like that's quite a. It's quite, quite a, a statement. To be had. So <laughs> let's talk about this. I so want to ha- say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I mean we have they give us uh, three different flavors of of um you know of ice cream here. Are these ice creams? I don't even know. Are these ice creams they're or sorbet? Sorbet. Well, Okay. They're it's vegan. That's so. Oh god. Uh, so no. Okay. No. That they're explains really, a lot. More like ices. Like they were very yeah. ice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the the one that Not I see cream. here in the forefront is what was that? That was like a saffron deal. It was. Uh, okay. Yeah. Saffron and what? There was something what, what else was in saffron there. Saffron and what? Yeah. We forgot well, already. <laughs> I think I think the other thing was flavor in quotes. So yes. saffron. And well, I think flavor. flavors. I think flavors in quotes is a green one. Okay. Or maybe maybe flavor. Maybe green one's unique. I don't know. One of those two. Words. It certainly isn't seasonal. I hope it's not seasonal. <laughs> well, you would Actually, hope, no, hope you would hope seasonal. it is, so I that can change. Season, yeah, it will change with the season. <laughs> Um, the flavor to the left, uh, what was it? There was a, it was coffee. Date and coffee. Dates and coffee. And black pepper, I think. And some pepper, and yeah. black pepper, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then the green one is what? Uh, Straight chloroform. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think, I think even when we asked about this one, right? Like the waitress yeah, was she like, really I struggled. Yeah, she's like, I yeah. don't know where they get this. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't know where Chef sources this from. I've asked him several times and it's so hard to remember. Yeah. To us, I think it reminded us of star anise, which is like a yeah. right. Well, that's the flavor that she brought flavoring. up, right? Yeah, very fragrant. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's like sage, right? Sage you only mm-hmm. use a little leaf to yeah. flavor a whole pot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Same with star anise, you only use one pod to flavor a whole pot. Yeah. This felt like they took the sack of star anise and just shoved it into this little scoop. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay. So we have those three, and then kind of lining it there in the bottom we have the chi- you know the banana chips uh, but then also kind of these other little i don't know additions here including uh like what are basically pop rocks um right when you bite into it they they pop uh well, they're right there yeah, so it was a mix of things they're like sprinkles pop rocks mm-hmm. there was like sesame seeds in there yeah that sounds really gross mm-hmm. no it was yeah i, I don't think wanna... the sensation was quite nice yeah, I don't want to like you know. I was I never want to be the you know coming out and bagging on a dish because I mean this is clearly nothing I could ever like accomplish. Mm-hmm. But but I'll say I I feel like I have multiple emotion. It's like during this dish, it's like we ordered and it's like oh you know this is unique seasonal flavor. Like maybe this is some magical thing, and then it comes out and you're kind of like oh this this looks a little bit weird. But you're like mm-hmm. maybe this is some really cool deconstructed banana split because everything else we've been eating was like so inventive, so kind of fun. And you're like, all right, maybe maybe I'm just missing it, and you know I just gotta try it. Yeah. And then you know you pile it onto a bite and you try it and you're like, no, nope, yeah, mm-hmm. I, no, I just I don't get it. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm missing it. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely uh it was unique for sure. It was you know unique. Um, yeah. But you know again I think. Uh, I think it accomplishes what it's trying to be, you know, as far as being kind of out there, uh, some creative take on something. Um, I don't know. It, you know, may, everything may not necessarily be like a, a hit, but uh, definitely gets the job of like kind of showing, you know, some degree of creativity, I think. Um, so, for sure. yeah, for those, sure. were, those were the, those were the desserts that we had, that we got to enjoy. Um, but that seemed, yeah, that was kind of the overall meal. Uh, just curious, I forgot, did, did you guys have something to, to drink, um, you know, along with the meal? Yes. What was that? What did we have? We had a sour that I took a photo of, so I remind myself what it was called. It, it was, was called what? Thai Delight Treat. That was like a mango yeah, sticky was, rice sour or something. Ooh. Yeah, it's a sour ale with mango, fra- uh, mango, let's just say, flavored rice and coconut cream. And even when you poured it out, there was a, a thick foam that never subsided. Um, cool. It was like a creaminess to it. 
Um, and yeah, it, it tasted like a mango sushi rice on the sour side, but it had really good flavor. I've actually been trying to see if I can find where to buy this stuff. I mean, Carmen saw it at Total Wines. Mm, but... Prairie Artisan Ales. Their their drink list was pretty, but yeah, their drink well, the list was pretty dope. Brewery. Nice. Do you think it went well with the uh, with the meal overall? I don't know. I mean, everything had so much. I, it definitely was on theme with everything else we had. Okay. In terms of like a Southeast Asian flavor with a lot of Southeast Asian other flavors. Okay. Um, it's not like. It was meant to be paired with all those things because everything was so unique and different. But I enjoyed it. We definitely, we definitely, uh, were, were still talking about it when we had left the restaurant. Oh, so, okay, we left an impression. They Good. should have it at the uh, the Glendale Bevmo. Glendale Bevmo. That's my weekend plan. <laughs> Are they still open at uh, ten oh five? Okay. Um. So from uh, on the weekend. Well, no, I mean right now. From uh, the menu that we have here, so it seems like for the the large dishes, we there are just only like you know the three other dishes we didn't get to try, which I'm sure would be sizable on their own. But I guess my question with that is, would you go back? Would you try it again? Yes. I'm actually gonna say probably not anytime soon, but not not due to any not due to anything I'm like, oh, you know, I, I didn't like it. Like I thought it was great. I think my biggest reason is like so much of the fun was the inventiveness of the dishes. Um, and so, and, and for, fortunately we went with like a, a big enough group where we really got to get like so many of them mm-hmm. that I, I don't feel a burning need to go back when there's like so yeah. many, there's yeah, so absolutely. many other restaurants in LA that I want to try. But yeah, if, I'll say if there was someone else who was in town and like, mm-hmm. you know, they, you know, I kind of showed it to them and they were interested. Like I'd, I'd happily go back to show somebody else, okay. but just, just for me on a weekend, it's, you know, like I thought it was great, but it's probably not going to be on like a, Oh, it's a Saturday. I need a place to eat. Like I'm going to poltergeist. Like, yeah, it's just, I don't think it's quite the super casual spot, right. That you just, you just want to yeah. drop in and just have a, you know, a casual meal or anything. I think, I think it still is, even though they've, it's taken a lot of taken away necessarily like of the pretension of fine dining or anything. I think, because maybe of the presentation, the inventiveness, I think it's still kind of a special occasion, inventive kind of, I mean, you know, yeah. kind of destination type of place that you want to uh, go only maybe every so often. I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah, but, exactly. But definitely not stopping anyone from going at all. You should definitely, definitely check it out. Yeah, I'd, I'd highly recommend it out to people who, yeah, are maybe looking for, for something something a little bit different yeah um or or people who you know they just they kind of yeah to your point they like kind of fine dining but but yeah don't want something like super pretentious or expensive Mm -hmm. or like i i think i think it should definitely be on you know whatever hot new restaurants in la like it should definitely be on that list somewhere (laughs) and i'm sure they are i mean they they're they've definitely blown up um you know since they've opened and you know even before a lot of word of mouth going through and um, it's definitely a unique spot. I think a special place, you know, um, in LA for people to try. Um, and I'm glad we got to try it. I'm glad uh, you guys were able to come out. I hope my child, I don't know, maybe find time to, you know, take a visit. Um, maybe we can try it out or I don't know if you, if you ever get around to it, that'd be good too, but it's definitely worth, uh, you know, definitely worth a visit. Um, sounds like it. I am actually, I am excited to go back and try. Well, no, I am excited to get another hit of prawns. I definitely need <laughs> another need those, round. Need those prawns, yeah. But, I mean, we did try a lot of things, so really there aren't too many new things to discover, and that's probably the only thing I would be holding me back um, from going because there's only three other big dishes. Right, like, right. how much of that could I possibly eat? Uh, but, but, yeah, I agree. It is, it is not a quick, casual romp like you really have to plan it out get a reservation all that jazz but i would happily go back at some point maybe not this weekend but at some point yeah um in the near future get back there if my child if you're interested uh let's do it yeah maybe this weekend i don't know or if not okay, next this weekend. weekend let's do it <laughs> i'll just get a i'll just get a prawn dish for myself and then we'll share it else. right yeah, right not be- this weekend <laughs> next weekend should be possible. right in between barbenheimer Perfect. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh, between the intermission of Barb and Hyber, they're yeah. saying like between yeah. one movie and another. Okay, yeah. Yeah. that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay, it's part of the upper. Yeah. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, also, quick fact check: they do not have it at the Glendale Bevmo. Oh no! But, <laughs> but closer to you, actually, in Burbank, there's a place called Fancy Free Liquor, and they should have the Tide Delight there. Sorry, Fancy Free Liquor. Yeah, that's yeah, what it's this called. Is the best store. <laughs> Mm, I like the sound free that does sound fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Um, before we kind of wrap it up, I mean that uh, I do want to mention one more thing because um, I had already planned this on my own, but um, I had convinced John to uh, to come along. We had uh, more dessert after because um, it's just appropriate. Um, so we. Uh, not too well, far. Well, after that banana split, it might have been. <laughs> <laughs> it was a palate cleanser, is what it was. Uh, yeah, for me, it was just, um, just an addition. So, um, just a few. Gelato pazzo. Yeah, absolutely. You got it. Of course. Yeah. So, just a few it's miles. Very, it was sense. great. <laughs> I think there's picture proof that it's not. It wasn't. <laughs> I think that was generative AI, deep fake technology at work. Uh, this is why we're striking. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're taking all the jobs. Um, you're going to give it all to robots. Yeah, no, I get it. Um, yeah, apparently John claims he's never been. So I thought, uh, we'd take him and have him try once and for all. <laughs> so pasta gelato is actually, we've mentioned it a few times on this uh, pod and, um, it is a well-known s- spot in the Silver Lake neighborhood. Um, it's been around for quite a while, uh, I think since 2006, and they just make some uh, small batch uh, gelato. And um, uh, the reason, I think, one of the reasons why they've kind of come uh, to the, I think, come to attention, especially lately, um, we've kind of brought up a, you know, a story that um, you know they have, they recently, you know, got some new neighbors. Uh, right next door by the name of uh, Salt and Straw. Maybe you heard of them. And um, yeah, there was this kind of controversy of the placement of this. It's it's just right, literally one building over. It's, you know, managed by the same, you know, landlord and everything. Um, and to have kind of this big name ice cream shop, you know, next to this, you know, uh, mom and pop type shop is kind of concerning, right? Because... Um, it, it seems that the trend that uh, in time, maybe that uh, one will take over the other and so on and so forth. And, you know, it, it just may not do well for the smaller guy. Um, Wait, so are we saying the average consumer does not get two ice creams? Because I feel like amongst this friend group, <laughs> like mm-hmm. the natural response would be like, oh, there's two. Like, I'll just get one and one. <laughs> Why uh, decide? <laughs> that's right. Why not both? Um, probably for the more people who are like that. That's right. I think so. Um, wouldn't be a problem. No, it probably wouldn't be a problem. But um well, yeah, has so, arteries aren't full yet, so he can handle it. <laughs> that's right. He's got plenty of space. So okay. But um well John, since uh it was apparently your first time there, um <laughs> what, what uh what what were your thoughts? You know, we I growing up we our middle school and our high school was along Sunset Boulevard. You had to pass this place on Sunset Boulevard, and I remember seeing it growing up uh the entire my entire time uh but never having tried it supposedly mm. um it was nice it was really nice um gelato flavor it's you know i got used to italy where um you kind of just have to have faith that hazelnut is hazelnut and nutella is nutella and chocolate is chocolate pistachio is pistachio you know it was nice to be able to try flavors um they had a some of the classics and they had some fun ones like they had a what was it, a coffee coffee and cookies flavor mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. and i also had forgotten that american serving sizes are different from italian <laughs> serving sizes because this was like maybe a small golf ball, a small soft oh, sorry, this was like a softball's worth of gelato yeah. it was a mm-hmm. lot of gelato very rich yeah. Um, but it was really nice. It was really good. And, you know, the one thing I couldn't help but noticing was that yeah, Salt and Straw was set up right next door, but there was just a constant line of people going in and out of pots of gelato. And I didn't see as many people coming in and out of the Salt and Straw. You know, so it is kind of sad to, to know that this place isn't, or at least they're not planning to stick around because I think they do have 
a strong foothold in the community. And there are a lot of people who do enjoy their ice cream or their gelato. Mm-hmm. Um, it was really popular. We couldn't even get chairs at one point. I had to wait for a couple of parties. And they have ample seating in front of their, in their place. Uh, but overall, I thought it was great. Really nice gelato. Worth checking out before they go. Yeah. I, um, you know, I think typically I'm, I'm under the mindset that, yeah, there's space for everyone. Um, but I think in this case, and I feel like, you know, just the timing and, and, um, is, I don't know. It's just, this, it just doesn't seem in good taste. I feel, uh, in this case, I mean, I love salt and straw, but we have our share of salt and straw still. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, I have mixed feelings about, you know, this particular, you know, placement, you know, of, uh, next to this, this kind of a longstanding spot, but well, I guess only time will tell like, um, you know, again, I think, uh, if my facts are right. Um, you have to fact check. I think the owner, you know, again, may, he may not intend to renew the lease of the place, whether that was his original intention or because of this whole thing, maybe now that's kind of the direction, but, um, you know, either way with the time that is still, they're still around. Yeah. Please, uh, definitely check them out. Um, and whether or not you get salt and straw as well, I guess that's up to you, but, uh, you should definitely try out pot. So, um, while you're out there. So, um, yeah, that was, that was good. That was, a that was definitely a good, good move. And now John has been, and now he can't say otherwise. So, <laughs> cause he l- literally has never been at any other time of his life. There is no proof. Apparently, never been. No. Yeah. Uh, First time visit. I should have gotten a button. <laughs> First visit. Oh man. Um, so anyway, that's, uh, that, that kind of rounded off our, um, our evening. So poltergeist and some Pazzo to, to finish it off. And so that was overall very good, very good day. So hopefully we have more days like that, but, um, I don't know if you guys have any other thoughts or any other things you want to, uh, to share. He's like, get me out of here. And you guys are about this podcast. <laughs> that's right. But that's um mm-hmm. this this goddamn production value has dropped too much. <laughs> I just gotta throw it out there again. Taking a stand. Okay. We just did half an Oppenheimer for one restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Oppenheimer had a little bigger budget. Oh, they sure did. <laughs> we don't quite have the same, but um with that said. We'll just wrap it up here. Come to the end of another episode. So thank you for joining us. We're excited to bring you more of our adventures with good food and good people. Reach out to us. We're, I'm at Dumb and Hungry. He's at my underscore chow. You can email us at hi at for your feedback and love letters. You can find us on YouTube where you can like, subscribe, and smash. And you can also find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever fine podcasts are served. But until next time, I'm Angelo. I'm Acho. I'm Daniel. Daniel. Okay. And until next time, remember to try one of each. Is this Google Doc Garbo, dude? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? I had to. I had to think like uh, on the fly here. I didn't have many. I didn't have many options. You know, you took photos. You took so many photos. I did. They're probably the, good photos. And I, I started with Yelp pictures. Well, because I didn't have much to work with. I mean, like that's you know the easily like easiest to access, right? And then I thought, okay, I'll just add these pictures to my Google Doc, and. Uh, <laughs> Not like Google Slides, like Docs. <laughs> well, because with slides you have to, to, make, window, you have to yeah. make slides for each, yeah, for for each yeah, picture. Yeah, but you just paste the... one picture per slide, and you can just. I had to do them. that in real time, right? <laughs> if I prepare, <laughs> oh, you mean control new paste, control new paste? <laughs> it don't work like that. Not like now. It don't work like that right now. I could do that if I if I thought about that before. You could just <laughs> like you could just like download to your desktop and then like open it up in like Photos in Windows, app and yeah. just like. <laughs> well, I think that was part of the problem: the transferring of the photos from the iPhone to 
the PC uh, is typically a challenge. If I um, if I had my uh, notebook with me, actually it's upstairs. That would have been a lot easier. Would airdrop to that notebook and probably done probably done that. But I didn't have that on sure. hand, so I'm trying to think on the fly. Look, I'm trying to be creative here. Okay, I'm trying to. Sounds like a first world problem and excuse to me. <laughs> oh, I didn't have the right computer, so I had to use a different computer. And you had the time to make an outline over the however long, but you didn't think about the picture part. Right. All things you right. didn't think about the picture. Well, right. What's the ratio of the the listeners? Are we talking mostly YouTube? Zero. Or mostly podcasts. Zero to zero. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're all right. streaming into empty void at the moment. Uh, <laughs> you you're you're, you're all part of the count, the viewer count here. Okay, that's that's a that's the total viewer my, count. That's, a yeah. that's, my that's my true, actually. Yeah, Carmen and I. Well, subtract Ready. one for me. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm in this. Why do I need a watch? <laughs> yeah, so it's not wrong. So, but um, yeah, that that would have been a better, it would have a better way to handle that. But uh, you know, that's what we, I don't know, got to deal with it now. I um, I guess what I could have done as well, like I in post, I could have overlaid the pictures, you know, as we're talking. But then you don't have the chance to. You don't have the opportunity to, to see them. Yeah. But uh, it could have been done too, but I'm too lazy for that. You know, I have to actually, I, I really I, try. I thought this was fun. I thought yeah, that was fun. I thought it was great. I, um, yeah, I mean, you think of the corporate life. I mean, people probably done worse. Okay. What are you talking about? <laughs> the corporate life. <laughs> I think he's You're talking about the fact, John, ass. that your PTO is stored in an Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> Excel. Yeah. <laughs> An unprotected kinda, Excel spreadsheet. You, you kind of one up my PTO tracker. Is that what's happening? <laughs> I'll show you one PowerPoint slide. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I don't know. Uh, maybe if there is ever a next time. Yeah, it just, it just didn't come up. It ain't. But, this is uh, a podcast after all. How much posts do you do? I really tried to do none. Honestly, I tried to do this in one take. So I think it's only lately that I've just done some very basic cuts and minor things. So there's like a few things like I would, cu- you know, just cut off or whatever. But most of the time, keep everything intact um, as is, um, namely because I'm lazy, you know. So, um, I mean, it's, I mean, I mean it's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. It is a lot of work. And yeah. it sucks. Yeah. You know, so if you do it, so that the way, you know, that's why we use OBS to put in all our elements in there already, all the transitions, the intro and stuff. Like just do it in one take and then uh, I just chop off what I don't need and then that's it. Just export and then I'm done. Cause even the quality of the audio, it's like it's kind of already more or less what I want it to be. I don't have to like to go into it too much. And then, um, that's it. The longest, honestly, probably the longest thing that takes is the upload to, to YouTube. Thankfully, the internet held up okay. Um, I don't know what happened. Like I said, yeah, I think it held up okay. There were a couple of times where you froze on us. Did it? Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, obviously, while, I, would, while obviously talking, I wouldn't know. Yeah. Um, You'll see it. Oh, I wasn't sure. Actually, will, was you, will you see it? <laughs> yeah. I will. But will you see it, actually? Uh, no, I won't, because um, I'm using a different source for oh, my camera. Because you're recording it. Yeah. Well, my camera is like, I'm using like my actual camera, um, as opposed to using the camera that I see on Discord. So, um, Got it. So that's fine. But Daniel did drop off for a little bit. That was probably yeah. the only thing. Um, but I think... Uh, my child dropped off, but he, he was... Well, he literally just like, walked away. <laughs> yeah, he was like, he's like, I'm free! I thought you were going to be gone for the rest of that segment, honestly. <laughs> And then he just casually walks back at the end. It's like, you know. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man. Well, I I'm gave just... notification. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was waiting. Uh, I read that and I was like, you're just like, oh, I need to do this. I wouldn't have been surprised. It's like, I need to go and I'm not coming back. By <laughs> <laughs> I thought you would have just like grabbed Oli's giant ass Pikachu, put it in the chair and just walk off. Hey, you're well good. I should have. All right, next time.